another day just working on Project 52 Ford here. Just got some welding to do to finish on here. We pulled the motor out as you can see. Everything was just mocked up. Uh, we're going to do some painting afterwards, finish up the suspension. Yet again, I still screwed up and I forgot the parts in Stony. Not a big deal, but we'll do that next week. So yeah, just going to start doing some work. We should be wearing a safety shield, but that's me. still doing some body work on this cab we actually found this part here that looks like it's been rippled probably to do with worn door hinges and we also found another stress crack here so we'll just end up marking this out and cutting it out and we'll show you how we do it as we go but it is I don't know if the camera will pick it up but it is all ripply so we'll just make a little pie cut and cut it out and make a new piece but uh, we'll show you how we're doing it uh, we just use basic tools just like a little grinder death wheel whatever people call it and our little tech tip is actually use the proper oil. Don't use WD-40 because you will wreck them. So just, you know, a lot of little things like that will teach you. All right, we'll see how we do it. Okay, as you can see, we marked it out. We're going to start cutting it. Uh, when you do this kind of work, make sure you always wear your safety shield. Remember, you only get two eyes, so protect them. Okay, so we bent up our piece it actually fits pretty good we had to do a little bit of trimming but we just put in the brake and we made these subtle little curves it all fits pretty good and also behind it we actually sprayed a rust inhibitor paint behind it just to prevent any rusting so i'll put a couple tack welds whenever you do it you should wear the proper protection but uh, we'll just put some tacks in Alright, 
So anyway, it's tacked welded in right now. We'll start to massage it a little better right there, but uh, we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll show you how it is. See you soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so you'll see what it more or less kind of looks like. We'll just finish uh, filling it all in and grinding and smooth, and we'll come back in a few minutes and show you what it looks like. But uh, you kind of get the gist of it. So yeah, all right, thanks. so as you can see, we're all finished welding it. Uh, we did a quick grind, but it's really good. Just to, when we start doing the body work, we'll fill it all in, and it, uh, it's way better. It's not all wavy and bumpy, and you won't regret it when you open the door and it maybe hits it and wrecks the new paint. But yeah, that part is all done. Uh, we also finished sanding all the cowl. is all done. Everything's all down to bare metal. So that, it takes time, but it's done. Also, we we're able to finish two today. The steering arm, we got a new ball. The other one was just gone. We took the time, we peened it over and welded it and painted it so it can be installed. That'll be next week's installation. And as like everything, it's time consuming. So we started doing the rough mud work, bondo work, whatever you want to call it. Most of this will be coming off, but it's, it's getting there. Like I said, it takes time. So in that, and yes, we finished doing the dash. The dash is almost finished being sanded. The jams are done. We'll finish off the inside of the floors and the firewall the inside next week, or maybe one night this week. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, we do all have jobs, 12 hour days, and you don't feel like coming and doing this at night, but. And uh, yeah, all the mounts are all welded in, painted, they're done. And the cr cr any cross members all done, painted, so it's finally, it's there, so. Yeah. Yeah. This is a homemade tool we made uh, for trying to take out this small dent. It's uh. It is what it is, but you'll see it actually does work. So uh, yeah, here we go. like that action. There you go. And there you go. We'll just do some final grinding, knock this off, and then just a light skim. And then, yeah, there you have it. That dent, it will be taken out, and you'll never know. Just shows what you can make with junk. Okay, so we finished grinding it, a little bit of fill, and it uh, will be good as new. Uh, we weren't able to get in the back part just because of the structure of the cab. So, but uh, the way we did it, uh, 
yeah, it is what it is, but it worked fine. So it's better than having a crease or what some people do is just fill it up with mud. And yeah, so that's not the way we roll. I try not to. So then also in the cowl here, there is a, a crease here on both sides. We're not sure exactly what it's from. We think maybe from when the hood hinges were bad, maybe the hood stretched it or we're not sure, but there's on both sides there got these little creases. So we're gonna try the exact same thing as we did on the post. So here we go, watch your eyes. And you can see it did lift out that crease. So we'll grind it and we'll see what it's like after that. So we'll let you know. And I should also recommend while we're doing this, you should be wearing the proper welding helmets. But uh, yeah, that's our own stupidity. So yeah, see you soon. Say that was a pretty bitching weld.
that's good. As you can see, we did actually pull the dent out. We'll grind it and we'll show you what it looks like and we'll see if we have to do it again, but uh, we'll see. Thanks. All right, so we finished uh, grinding this. It actually turned out really well. Um, the way we did it is because, well, the stud grinder, the, our stud gun is actually at one of the other shops, so we just made this homemade deal just out of scrap metal just to show you what you can do if you use your imagination. And it actually took this dent out really well. And we did off camera because we weren't sure how it was going to work, but there was a good crease in here. And this has all been taken out. And like I said, you can't really get behind here because of uh, just the extra cab structure. So that's really, you know, it's a hell of a lot straighter than what it was. And a certain somebody is really happy with it. So yeah, it turned out really well. Um, so in closing, you know, you don't have to have a lot of tools and a lot of money to do this stuff. You just have to have knowledge. And uh, we seem to have a little bit of it, not much, but so there. So, okay, and this is just some of the tools we've been using. Nothing fancy. Um, like I said, just slowly been buying stuff as we go. Um, I'll explain to you what some of it is and what we use. Uh, just basically, everybody knows what just basic disc grinders are. This is just for taking down grinds or welds and just loose stuff like this. We've used for most of the body work or uh, taking the paint off. It actually works really well. It takes quite a while, but it works. Um, just same thing with palm sanders. This is our death wheel for doing smaller cuts as you've seen earlier in one of the videos. This is just another grinding wheel for taking off welds. And just various different bunch of uh, dollies for different applications. And you'll see us as we go where they go and how we use them. This is one of my personal favorite tools. Just uh, just for making these crimps and also punching holes for spot welds. But yeah, this is one of my favorite tools. It makes actually a pretty neat noise. I don't know why, but it just does. And this is also here, it's just a shrinking shrink hammer. So I always screw up when I say that, but that's what it is. You've seen us use it too, and you'll see it a lot more. And this one just has a pick for getting in different applications. Um, everybody should be using a welding helmet. You'll see us sometimes not, or me. Like I said, that's the price of being stupid. But uh, don't chip out, cheap out and buy a cheaper one. Actually buy a good one. Like again, those are your eyes. You only get two. This is just our board sounder we use. Airboard sounder. And these are just household palm sounders we'd use to take off rust and paint. You know, 20 bucks and hey, it works. When it burns out, throw it out and get another one. These are just their duck build uh, vice grips just for clamping steel. Usually a great price uh, piece. Also, we've learned too is don't ever buy cheap vice grips. Buy ones that actually say vice grip. You'll thank yourself in the long run. And I gotta say, the tool of the day, like I said, it's just using a bit of your brains. It's just made out of scrap steel that we had laying around and you've seen earlier how it just pulls out dents. Literally cost just a few minutes of making and say actually saved a lot of time. Like I said, we have a stud gun at home or at my place, but we didn't feel like driving a half hour to go get it. So, hey, why not? Like I said, in closing, like I said, we've always just started out with cheaper tools and we've slowly gotten better. So, like I said, if we can do it, you can do it. You just got to use your brain, get off the couch, get outside and do something. And like I said, the lathe, you'll see us during different projects using it. I won't be because I'm not very good at it, to be honest. But uh, you never know, one day I might learn. But uh, you'll see when in another garage, we have a lot more machining equipment that we'll need and we'll use. But um, that'll be another episode in itself, not just some little clip. Um, but yeah, and if you got a really big dent, this guy does work, but I don't recommend it. That's about it. Uh, like I said, have a great day. Thank you.